I am live. Yes. Control C. Edit page. Need to join. Delete. Control V. Not bold. Not blue. Not that color blue anyway. Link. Enter. Link. Edit. Open a new window. Update. Update. Da, da, da. View page. Slide down. There's the link. Click on it. Comes up to me, which is very exciting. Close down Jolly Roger. Come on in, everybody. Have a seat. Let me know if the uh, sound is good for you. I just need one person to say, yep, the sound is making sense. Okay. All right. Sit here and wait for. We'll start at 5:45 today. So when you have, a, just take your time to get settled in. Let me know when you have, if you can hear me. down bum, 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 dee, dum, bum, bum. I need to speaking, speaking. All right. just wait a few more minutes wait six we're gonna wait six minutes and then we're gonna get started Question mark. Enter. All right. Let's hope that um, things don't go like yesterday, where I sat here and gave a lovely lesson, and I was disconnected from the internet at some point somehow, and then I couldn't unconnect from the live stream, and ended up having to delete the whole thing. Three more minutes and then we'll get started, guys. Let me know if you're able to hear. I'm going to move this microphone up a little closer to my face.
Start in two minutes. start in one minute if any of you are listening and would like to let me know if the sound sounds fine at your house that would be helpful I'm just trying to figure out if I'm I'm peaking I'm peaking a little bit on this microphone and these ones seem to be fine so just hoping the sound sounds good at your house Start in one minute. Again, if you're just tuning in and you could let me know how the sound, I sound, hey Arlo, sound good. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Arlo, this is below your ability today, so I'm glad you're here anyway. One more session. Hey, Linda, good to see you. <laughs> Uh, your fingers getting toughened up, Linda. You've been putting in a lot of hours, a lot of time on this stuff. Uh, hopefully getting, getting everything back to nice, smooth, beautiful, right? Um, working on the calendar. Yeah, right. Me too. What's funny is when I first started playing, I built up these really huge calluses that were like, you would have to file them off and it was really a huge pain, pain in the butt. And then, uh, um, uh, since then, you know, I take better care of my hands. I use a lot of lotion, so I end up with calluses basically underneath the skin, and uh, it's a lot more pleasant than those big old crunchy things I used to get. Of course, I also was playing a lot more metal string back in those days, and uh, um, so I play a lot more nylon string now. This is metal string guitar I'm using today, but uh, um, oh yeah, try it on your 12 string, Darlo. That'll that'll sound cool, right? Let's see, getting more limber and playing a bit, just. Uh, yeah, right. When it, you know, you don't just turn around one day and can play amazing. Um, just trying to get a little better every day, right? And that's what I. That's what I'm doing. That's what everybody's trying to do. Just get every day, get this much better. That's our goal. Just this much better each day. Um, yeah, Linda. Uh, I have both, right? I I have. Um, metal string guitars and nylon string guitars and i don't think i have a preference i think i like playing both of them and so it's probably a good idea to have one of each sitting around some days you feel nylon stringy some days you feel metal stringy uh, some days you want to plug in and make a lot of noise that doesn't happen to me very much anymore but you know, sometimes right all right let's go ahead and get started and uh let me hold this up so i know where to cut uh we got a couple of people in logged in. I don't know who they are. So welcome. Glad you all are here. Yesterday I got disconnected somehow, apparently from the internet and I gave a lovely lesson <laughs> how to play for Jaka uh, in first position and uh, it did not record or it didn't, I don't know, somehow when I exited it, it wouldn't let me exit. And then so I ended up having to delete the whole thing in order to get it to stop. And it was uh, kind of a bummer, but, uh, you know, it's just a, another lesson, right? And so let's run through Frere Jaca. We're going to do level one, lesson two, which is the Frere Jaca in first position. And we're going to run through that real quick. I'm not going to get into details of all of the stuff that I would have told you. We're just going to play through it one time, make sure that, that uh, the basic skill set is making sense. Um, first off is uh how you hold the guitar 60 degree angle is best this third fret should be oddly close to your nose that should feel kind of like whoa there, there's the neck um and this is up against my body it's not pour, pulled out somehow weird like that uh, i'm sitting on a armless chair i'm sitting with both of my feet basically straight and flat on the ground and my my left leg is up on a stool 
Uh, I think this is the best way to play. If you hold your guitar in some other fashion, it's, it's allowed by law, but it's going to make you work harder. And uh, um, so I think this is, I know that this is the best position. You can fight it in whatever manner that you want to. Uh, thumb, always behind the neck, never up here, never out here, never weird on the side or any of that. Just always pat your thumb perpendicular up against the neck and it hangs out behind the middle finger. And that's all we're doing on that. Okay. Uh, first thing is the chords. We've got strings five, four, three, and two, and one. If you hit the sixth string, it's okay. Our chord is fourth string, index finger, third string, middle finger, second string, ring finger. Big thing is make sure that first string stays open. And that's why we have this beautiful round shape um, when we're making chords. And um, we want to try as much as possible. Keep your wrist straight. And that way you're not playing like this. And uh, Or your chicken wing is coming out. Right? We just want everything nice and soft and pretty. Okay. We're in a four beat pattern. If you're if you're newer and just getting started on working on chords, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you are a next level player, you're starting to think about doing the claw shape. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And beyond that, it's it's arpeggio picking, thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle, ring, one and two and three and four, and one, two, three, four. Two, three. Um, you can do a double time it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three four. One and two and three and four and one two three. One two three four. Okay, so any of those any of those techniques are going to be valuable to you. Um, if you are strumming, usually I recommend just thumb down, um, but also index finger with your nails going down, and then your pad of your fingers come back up. Those are all the finger style systems that I that I think basically that's the bulk of it. We don't use a pick in finger style because we have to. We're going to ultimately end up having to use all four of these fingers, and that's why we don't use a pick. Um, there are styles that use pick, and that's absolute. There are reasons you use a pick. You want to be loud. You want to be very accurate and specific. You're wanting to play melody, um, and you're only going to play one note at a time. Then a pick makes a lot of sense. Um, otherwise, uh, I would say. You know, those are there's a certain styles of guitar where pick comes in a lot. Um, in finger style, we don't use them. Okay, we're gonna play sing and strum. You guys know I'm a terrible singer. There's the note we're looking for. And one, two, ready, play. Again, Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, Dorme Vu, Dorme Vu, Sonne Le Martine, Sonne Le Martine, Ding Dang Dong, Ding Dang Dong. Trying to use different right hand patterns to come up with different ideas about what it would sound like. Checking them all out, trying to find which one sounds the best. That's the system I use. Is I just mess around with all of them until I find one that I like. All right. Uh, now we'll play the melody. If you are brand new and you're like, I don't know how to read tablature, go and check out Frere Jaca, or I think it's called Brother John on DenverGuitarOrchestra.com. Uh, first song is called Brother John Teaches You How to Read Tablature. And uh, we're going to do it um, with just all twos, and once in a while a three is going to come in. So in, in our middle fingers on the twos and ring fingers on the threes, and that's all we're going to play. First position, the index finger would be here, but we don't have any ones, so we're just going to play in second play with the two and the three stay in first position okay here we go from the top the first thing you're going to do is hit that two on the third string one two ready play two oh two 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 oh two 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 three oh two three oh oh two 
I'm ending up in a nice rest stroke here every time uh, or every single note my thumb is playing whatever I need to play and then resting on the string right below it make sure that I don't accidentally have that one go off right I'm actually just physically resting it there um, next level players you of course are working on index and middle finger to play that exact same song and by the way it's harder than you think right and so be working on one index and middle uh, getting yourself more and more comfortable with that i'm very uncomfortable with that because i play everything with my thumb almost um and so that's a definitely a next level skill to be working on playing your melodies okay final piece from yesterday was tough acts and we're going to grab our a chord okay and we're going to thumb down until we hit the number of notes pres prescribed i will probably end up having to lift up this finger to make some modifications i may add my pinker to make some mod modifications and i'm probably going to roll down my ring finger here to make some modifications to the to accommodate the melody sitting above the chord okay so let's give it a try from the top one again tough right so we slow down one two three four That's sitting there the whole time. Let your guitar finish ringing out, and then if you want to shut it down, pull it, pull this up over the bridge. Okay, so that's that's I would play finger style, at least initial finger style. I'm just using my thumb, including the chord and the melody together at the same time. Sounds pretty nice, right? And I love the fact that on this entire song, this A string just keeps ringing out and ringing out and ringing out, and just makes you sound like you really know what you're doing. And I do think that generally speaking uh when you're an adult guitar player that's what you'd like to do you'd like to be able to put some melody and some chords together make it sound really beautiful and i think i think it's definitely worth your time to if, if that's a new system for you to get comfortable with that and if it's a system that you've been working on a while um you know obviously you're not playing one chord songs anymore but be thinking about instead of thinking about well what do i got to do here how many different choices you can make on your right hand to make that make sense for you Okay. All right. Let's move on now to our real lesson for today, which is Skip to Malou. We're not going to spend a ton of time on this song. This is a song that is super annoying, but it, there's one important thing about it is that toward the end of book two, I decided, hey, we've got to deal with the fact that the F chord exists. Uh, 
Uh, everything has been ADE up to this point for the most part. I think they have some C's and G's mixed in there, but really limited chord choices, you know, chord pairings, getting back and forth between one and the other, very, very important stuff. Um, but we do have to accept the fact that F chord is why people quit guitar. And we want you to get where you're okay with making a crummy F chord for now and just getting getting it to be part of something that you, yeah, you're never going to like it, but you're also got to get over hating. <laughs> so you got to get over the fact that it has to sound perfect. Uh, Arlo is sitting in with us today and Arlo can play every bar chord like it is no big deal. It doesn't even probably occur to him that there's a problem with bar chords anymore. And we want to get you started on that pathway. With um, F chord, it is an E chord. Okay, So if you're thinking about an E chord, index, middle, ring. Okay, that's your E chord. One of the great guitar, great guitar, great chord you can make on a guitar. So that's an E chord. Now, to get to F, we're going to take that same shape, but we're going to use different fingers. Middle, ring, and pinky. Okay, so middle, ring, pinky. Okay, still got an E chord on. my thumb is hanging out right behind the neck you can't see it it's hanging out here behind the neck and it's right behind wherever the middle finger is okay that's what we want okay that's an e chord to turn it into an f chord you slide everybody up one fret and add a bar okay. Okay. so i want to back up and go through that whole process again what an F chord is, is an E chord with a bar on it. That's all we're talking about, okay? So instead of your regular E chord, you use your middle ring and pinky fingers. Okay, so we've got that E chord on. Okay, slide everybody up, one fret, and your bar. turns out when you first meet F chord, you hate F chord, you're going to quit guitar because of F chord, all of this stuff. And I agree. It's, it's awful. It is awful. Okay. But you'll find out down the road is that this is super useful. This is going to turn out to be something. If you want to play rock and roll, you want to play flamenco guitar, you want to play um, reggae guitar, having a complete control over all six of these strings going to give you a lot of power as to how how long the string rings out a lot of times on guitar it rings too long it's got too much sustain so it's nice just to be able to lift up your fingers a little bit stops all of the sound um, if you want to uh, not have to overthink stuff yeah there's a song right and i had one chord shape first position Sixth position, eighth position, first position. And so that's one of those things that in the beginning, this is really a bummer. In the long term, it's something that's a super powerful and useful tool. Um, when we're talking about F chord, when you first start it, you're likely to sound like this. Right? Now, Here's what you've got to talk yourself into. Otherwise, you're going to end up losing your mind over this. When you have a bar chord and you're a newer player, let it sound crummy. Let it sound crummy. Because as long as you're holding it correctly, there will come a day when it magically comes in. But what's happening here? Is, I don't know if you can see this in the video. You see this muscle right here? It's actually sticking up. This is a pretty powerful muscle that I have right now, right? It's the only muscle in my body that's any worth a darn, right? And it is working pretty hard to create this chord shape. And so if you don't have that muscle built yet, you've got to work, got a ways to go to get it built. And the way you build that muscle is either go rock climbing. You don't want to do that because it's outside um, or play guitar. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Right? And so uh, in the beginning, you're squeezing my head, mm-hmm. still coming out crummy. Just let it be crummy. Just let it be crummy. I promise it'll go away eventually. Mm-hmm. Okay. A couple of thoughts on terms of if, if you're getting close and you're like, yeah, I almost got it, but I'm having fighting. Uh, um, I, I just can't seem to get clear. One of the things that I w- learned from a YouTube video, honestly, was if you take your bar and actually set it on, on the fret wire, okay, here's a fret wire, you put your bar on that, and then roll it back just a little bit, um, you'll end up with your finger slightly on the side a little bit. The skin underneath here is going to be stretched really tight. And uh, you're going to have almost a little bit of a C-shape going on here. Not really a C-shape, but sort of. And then add your other finger down. Sometimes that's helpful, okay? So just tighten everything up, roll it back just a little bit, and you might get a pretty decent F chord out of it, okay? The biggest challenge with F chord, of course, is one, the strength and the pressure necessary to hold the bar down in the first place. And then the second one is getting it as, as solid as you can across all six strings. That's that's challenging. You're in this bar chord, you're you're getting some help from these guys. They're in front of the bar, so you don't have to worry about those strings. But the top string and the bottom two strings are having to get on there and get them down where they sound good. Uh, and so sometimes putting that bar there and rolling it back just a little bit and then adding those three strings up, and you get it, okay? Okay, so in isolation, that's something you can work on is trying it that way, see if that helps. Or if you're still getting it that way, just let it be that way, okay? Now, that's your F chord, okay? The nice part about F chord is that it's gonna, uh, very quickly in your life, that F chord is gonna move up two frets and you're gonna get a nice G chord right here. And then you're going to move up two more frets to five. You got a nice A chord sitting there. Now, here's what's here's why this is fun. We're going to learn to play beginning flamenco. G A G F E. Okay. And you pound on your guitar, make a lot of noise. That is a fun way, <laughs> where you sound kind of cool, uh, to get more practice in on your F shape. I'm playing an A, I'm playing a G. Okay, that's what we're working on. We maybe or maybe not. It seems like I'm peaking a little bit on my sound system here. Um, that's what you want to be working on, and hopefully that's going to make some sense to you. Some uh, and um, in the beginning, of course, be ready for. Be, be okay with being crummy. Um, what, last comment on that whole thing is when you're working on your F chord, one of the things that we talk about in guitar all the time is, hey, try to minimize the amount of tension. Don't be really working hard on stuff. And so I'm holding the guitar in proper position. I've got my left leg up. I've got this sitting up where I can get to it very comfortable. My right hand's in great shape. Everything looks beautiful. The problem is I'm having to squeeze like nobody's business out of this hand in order to get a clean sound out. That is okay. Okay. In the beginning, I'm supposed to say, oh, no, don't, you're not supposed to have tension. In the beginning, you're going to have to squeeze like nobody's business to start building the muscle up necessary for this hand. And so just know that there's a lot of tension there. My hand is, you know, ow, I'm kind of tired, right? You're going to get some, some, uh, basically this area right here is going to be real tired and really kind of hurt. So you want to do this for five minutes at the most, you know, um, and then move on to something else. Um, I notice right now my pinky is kind of tired, right? Because he's, he's having to hold down this 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 uh, this place right here, right? Okay. So you'll you'll be feeling different things in your hand if you're feeling the the pain, um, not the pain, but you can tell that you're definitely working your muscles in your hand. That's probably okay. If you're feeling it down here on your wrist, you're doing something wrong. Okay. We don't want this this 
to be uh you know usually that happens because we're doing holding this all weird and you get this crazy setup you know try to keep your arm straight let your hand do all the work that's what you were working on i actually have a decent f chord yay linda <laughs> the f chord is she's like can we move on to c7 all right and linda's f chord is killing it all right now in this song the main chord is f in music, F, G, A, B, C, A, B. <laughs> we, we're, Linda, you get to wear a tiara the rest of the night. You're, you're the queen. Um, F, G, A, B, C. C is going to be F's best friend. Okay. C comes in two varieties when your F is the main chord. You can either play a regular C or you can play a C7. You have to know how to do both. Okay. So let's put a C chord on first. Index finger on first fret, second string, second fret, fourth string, third fret, fifth string. <laughs> Using my brain. Okay. Uh, we would like to just play the bottom five strings. Sounds the best. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, but if you, only, if you hit the fifth string, it's not the end of the world. It's fine. better just to play five. Um, get good at playing a C chord. Spend some time getting that comfortable because guitarists, we end up playing a lot of music that was written on a piano and there's a lot of C chords in them. Okay. Now let's talk about making it into a C7. You got your C chord on. Everything's going great. To get to a C7, pinky finger, third string, third fret. So we're doing there. Listen to how cool one sounds. There's a C7, a regular C, C major. You could take that on a date. It's beautiful. Right? You hang out with it. I ask you to marry it. Okay. C's great. Add your pinky finger. Starts to get a little tension, a little bit of a, oh my god, what's going on? I'm telling a story, I'm hitting the crisis point. So that seventh chord creates tension in the music. And we like that tension so that we can then go back to the main chord. Okay, C7. F is your main chord. Okay. So seventh chords are designed to create tension that we resolve into the main chord. Okay, now, how do you get from one to the other and back? That's the real challenge with F and C7. You're hanging out here in F. I got to get to C7. Here's what I want you to think about. Probably will work for you. May need to rethink some things sometimes, but basically this is what we want to do. Index finger first. Middle finger up. Who's the pinky? play a C7, which we do in this song, I think he just goes from where it was to here. Okay, it's going to start out here and go to here. Get back, lead with the index finger, drop your middle finger, and raise your pinky. When I first started teaching guitar and I knew I was going to be dealing with this issue, I probably spent two nights, all I did at an incredibly slow pace. F, dun, C7, bum, 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 F, bum, 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 Okay, so that's something that I think um, you want to work on this really slow going back and forth between those two chords for a significant amount of time what you'll notice with me my 
pinky's gotten weirder and weirder over the years, and it's gotten a little arthritis in there and all this stuff. So a lot of times I'll get the C on just fine, but my pinky's flying all around. I'm trying to uh, talk him into getting there. Okay, so just know um, everybody's hands are a little bit different. Everybody's fingers are going to be cooperative in one way or another. Um, for me, these days, I've got to spend a lot of time making sure my pinky's doing what he's supposed to do because he's got a mind of his own. He doesn't want to do what he wants to do. Very quickly. C is F is here. G is here. A is here. G is here. And C is here. Okay. So I'm on sitting at three, five, seven, eight. Okay. So a lot of times, especially if you decide you're going to be a rock guitar, yes, I mean, Linda, I'm looking at you, okay? You could take the same chord shape. Okay. That's another way of playing the same thing as you got this bar chord, let's go all the way up here, same shape, C chord. Okay, so that's one fun thing to try when you're messing around with these songs. It's from F to C to F. Okay. Um, you can, there are other shapes you can take advantage of. For example, this shape is an A. A and then the C is sitting right here. Okay, so these are things you fool around with and kind of find whether you like doing it or not. Maybe you skip to Malou as a basic song pattern that you're using. On the nice part about this song, you get four measures of C. I'm C. Four measures of F, then four measures of C, and then on page two, uh, four four more measures of F two majors of C, and two majors of F. So you don't have to change a lot, and you're sort of anticipating the moment when you need to switch. And so that's what's kind of fun about it. All right, let's go through and talk about um, the song itself now that we have those two basic ideas figured out, okay? Basically got an F chord. It's going to sound terrible when you first start. The other nice thing, with C7, you, if it's time to strum and you only have your C on, just strum and then get around to getting your pinky on afterwards, okay? That, that's a nice chord shape for being able to get this on after the fact, okay? Uh, let's, let, let's just try just the chords, just chords, okay? One, two, three, four. Fly in the buttermilk shoe, fly. can do it 200 more times okay so again not a great song absolutely not a great song i know it's a dumb song <laughs> okay but we don't we don't care about that we care about can i get from f to c to f and that's all we're working on in this song is getting between those two um the melody itself i'd say um whether you want to work on it or not um it's probably if you're working on reading talature and you're building yourself up for um the that, that next level stuff um your twos okay so i've got my middle finger for the twos fly in the buttermilk shoe fly shoe so just again ones twos and threes and that all makes sense um, then you got some zeros in measure five. Fly in the middle finger. Ring finger. Okay, so that's that part. And then go back to the main idea. And then a little 
little bit of variation in the measures uh, 20, uh, 13. If you're working on correct fingering, make sure ones are here, twos are here, and three are here. Just another opportunity to practice first position playing, and that's what we're always working on that a little bit. Okay, all right. So then we talk about um, is playing tough acts necessary in the song? Probably not, because what what you can do. The only reason you'd play tough acts on this song is it gives you a chance to look at what would happen if we got rid of everything we didn't necessarily need. Okay, so the chord here, bar chord, E shape in front, but the tough you could just two, three, three. So you could do just like that, or you could be like, ah, I'm not going to use a bar. I'm just going to put an E shape here on two. Now I got to put on a real C7. C I, I wrote three, 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 two. Actually, I'm putting on an F shape. So I'm just adding that on right there. Okay, so you get into a pickle if you're just using this. You just use these guys. Okay. Those, those little decorative notes. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Now let's go put on a C chord. Okay. We don't even need to put on the seventh yet. So you don't really need to get your seventh on until here. Going on to measure nine. Back to your F chord. Probably using keeping this finger available because we know we're going to need it now. them in and then you go back to your C7 shape but you don't need your pinky get you got a problem you gotta have to move that middle finger move this finger and I you might add your pinky there probably your pinky would be better uh oh, where am I <laughs> sorry um, and then we got two, two, three, right? So two, 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 three. No, three, two, two. Oh, let's do. Oh, so after the, your pinky, just put your. So let's probably go with index finger for the twos on the third string. That way, everything is where it needs to be. Okay, so put your C chord back on. Move your index finger. Pinky. Lose your pinky. Open. And then back to your F shape. Okay. Again, I'm thinking through live. I didn't play and then obviously didn't spend a lot of time working on this prior to the lesson here. Is man, that's that's this moment where I'm like, okay, measure 13 is gonna be my problem. I'll spend a little bit of time figuring out what's gonna be the best fingering for that. And it turns out my first thought, dropping this, isn't the right thought. My second thought is let's raise the index finger up underneath there. That's a better thought. Okay, and so you'll find that as you're as you're studying the, your own fingering, you don't have to do exactly what I do, but you have to do something that works. And so if it doesn't work one way, try some other stuff and see what happens. Okay, last thing we'll talk about, and then I'll, and then we're out of here. Um, and today's kind of going kind of fast because we're trying to do two and one. Um, is the arpeggio picking? Okay, I set this up as the opposite. Normally, we do thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb. Index, middle, ring. What I did on this one is I put it backwards. Middle, ring, middle, index, thumb. And it's, again, just something else to work on. Okay? Get, getting more authority over your right hand. Fly in the buttermilk. Shoe, fly, shoe. Okay, and I'm going to switch to my C7. And I'm going to go up one string. Fly in the buttermilk shoe. Fly.
Bye. Shoot. Go to the second page. Go back to your F shape. Fly in. Oops. Sorry. I'm, I got a B minor on. B flat minor. Ready? Play. Fly in the buttermilk shoe. Fly shoe. Change your strings. Skip to the loop. My thumb. Lynn. With that kind of a, when I'm working on arpeggio patterns uh, up against just a, a singy songy type thing, I'm working incredibly slow to make sure I'm actually in getting whatever lesson is on the page into my noggin. Then when I go actually play the real song, I'm going to do whatever I want to with this hand. So in other words, I'm trying to learn, yeah, learning the ring, middle, index, thumb pattern. But when I play this, I may or may not do that. I may or may not use those exact strings because both of these chords, the F chord and the C7 chord, you can get away with all six strings. So you have full choice of, hey, it might be down here, it might be up here, it might be all over the place. It doesn't really, it's not going to matter from a sonic perspective. It's going to sound fine either way. But are you using the tools that you are working on? That's, that's what we're really after. All right, longer lesson than usual. Apologize. Hopefully, I didn't mess up your dinner too much. Um, uh, paperwork stuff, denverguitarorchestra.com has all the resources on there, so you can slide over there and pick up in all that stuff. Um, if you haven't signed up to get emails from me, put your email address in there. You can always unsubscribe later if you decide that I'm full of it. Um, if you have questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, send me an email. My email address is on denverguitarorchestra.com. We're meeting here every day at 545 until they let us out of the house <laughs> to play levels one, two, and three. If you are beyond level three and you want to start talking about your finger style program, uh, I have levels four and five. Four is for you know, good modern songs that you probably would want to play. Level five is multi-part stuff that we do in orchestra. Um, and uh, hopefully... Uh, this is making you a little bit better guitar player, or at least giving you some new ways to think about playing guitar that it's different than the way you've done it in the past. And I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Stay inside. It's snowing here in Denver, so I'm um, supposed to let up at some point. <laughs> Been a little bit more than I thought today. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I will see you soon. Whew. Work out. This is very good getting back to guitar you can well linda it's a lot right by the time i'm done teaching the guitar portion i'm usually ready to to take a little nap so yeah so i'm glad you're doing both um just be okay with knowing that's a lot <laughs> so uh yeah glad you stepped in with us uh well glad you've been working at it this hard you know it's a good re you own a guitar you might as well play it once in a while right so um all right have a wonderful evening you guys arlo good to see you whoever's hiding out over here good to see you thanks for thanks for being here and i will see all of you hopefully tomorrow i don't remember what we're working on tomorrow what are we working on tomorrow tomorrow we're going to do what are we doing tomorrow tomorrow is oh tomorrow is streets of laredo that's an awesome song and an awesome technique that we get to practice with so uh, um getting getting less confused or more <laughs> confused i get more confused the farther i get into music linda it just keeps coming at you and making you sad that you're not better than you are that's what i happens to me i don't know hopefully you're having the exact opposite reaction um anyway come come play the streets of laredo with me tomorrow it's an awesome song and uh, we'll we'll have a good time i'll see all of you tomorrow i'm gonna end this stream mm -hmm.